No. I, uh, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. You guys ever do this? I, I, was, I was like, all right, tonight I'm, I'm going to bed early. Early bedtime for me, 8 o'clock, full night's rest. And then the sun was coming up, and I'm like, why am I reading Kelly Clarkson's discography? <laughs> Where did the night go? I did, oh, I fell deep into a Google hole. I ended up spending most of the night reading about one of her producers, this guy named Max Martin. Do you guys know who he is? A few, all right, cool. Well, the rest of you, strap in, because I know everything. So, if you don't know, Max Martin is a 46-year-old Swedish music producer, and he writes and produces all the pop music. I didn't know it was all coming from one guy, but it pretty much is. Like, he made all the 90s shit you like, like Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys, all the dry hump and classics. And some good new stuff, too. He wrote and produced songs on the last two Taylor Swift albums, the Katy Perry Teenage Dream album. He has $300 million, according to Google, and I don't think that's enough. So, basically, Max Martin is the reason I've ever tried on a halter top, you know? Didn't work out for me, but he made me think it could. He, he writes all the songs that you can't escape. You know the ones that just sort of seep into your brain whether you want them there or not? Like, I never wanted to learn the lyrics to California Girls, but I've had to wait for a prescription before. So, you know, now I know it all. But I just, it made so much sense once I saw how many songs he's responsible for. I'm like, oh, this is why all the pop songs sound the same. This is why every pop song is like, I'm a little lamb with big old titties. <laughs> because it's all written by this Swedish guy and English is his second language. Doesn't it make so much sense? Every day this dude wakes up and he's like, all right, Max, what a girl's like, what a girl's like, uh, lollipops, bikinis, time for lunch. Like, that's his day. It's just crazy. So I became obsessed with him. I started reading all these interviews with him. I read all these interviews with his Swedish songwriting colleagues. And one of them, they interviewed one of his guys and they were like, how do you write all these pop songs for women? And he said, every month we read Cosmo. Cosmo, of all things. Like, if you've ever read an issue of Cosmo, you know it's like the worst representation of women in the world. Every tip in Cosmo is like, chug a bottle of mouthwash and eat your boyfriend's butt. And you're like, this isn't my life. And I didn't know what I was doing all those times. I walked up to a newsstand and was like, Cosmo, no thanks. I'm just gonna plug in my headphones and blast it directly into my brain. Like, I didn't know I was walking around listening to Cosmo. So I freaked out in the middle of the night. Oh, have you guys ever freaked out so hard you made a flow chart? <laughs> cool, cool, yeah, me neither. I won't do that, no. I, I'm gonna try to walk you through this. Okay, so I started listening to pop music from a very young age, and that was how I learned what it meant to be a sexy woman. Not knowing that Max Martin and all the Swedish guys making the pop songs were reading Cosmo so they could be sexy women. <laughs> Which means, for most of my life, I've been doing a bad impression of a middle-aged Swedish guy doing a bad impression of an American garbage woman. <laughs> Which means my life is a lie. And then the sun came up, and I was like, well, time for work. And I show up all frazzled, and everyone's like, are you okay? And I'm like, there's a man controlling the radio. He's telling me how short to wear my shorts. He's making me learn dance moves I don't want to dance. He's making me blow dudes. I don't want to learn anything else about the music industry now. I don't, I don't want to find out that like all of Bjork's catalog was written by one gnome in the woods. 